try to do your own due diligence. Don't wait for Facebook and Fox News and the internet to tell you. Do read the papers. See what they're saying about what happened. Yes, a video can do a lot more than that. You know what? Just to show you that a video will do a lot more than that. And again, with all due respect from all our hearts here, please try to understand what we're trying to say. We're not insulting the Christianity, and we're not definitely insulting Jesus. But with all due respect, consider the following. The Middle East have a lot of people that have cameras and videos and directors and everything. Now imagine if some moron, and if anybody did this in the Middle East, he will be a moron also. They had a video about Jesus in a homosexual way. A really bad film about Jesus talking to him about, talk about him as in a, a homosexual or whatever. And have every insult in the book about Jesus and the religion of Christianity. Don't you think this will get you upset? Don't you think if somebody did a video about the Virgin Mary as she's not a virgin or in a really nice orgy kind of thing. And do you think we're all going to be okay with that? And here's the other thing. Do you honestly think that everybody in the United States or the West in general will act exactly the same? So the rednecks will act exactly like the Harvard graduates, the UFC champion will act exactly like the librarian, the very educated one will act like a, a young idiot will, with, with, a, with a, a knife or a gun. People will act differently. <clears throat> That's what we are made of. We're made of emotion. And emotion sometimes takes charge, and people act differently. And again, I hate to say it, but if you go back to what happened in New York in, in the 9-11 situation, yes, it was very dramatic, and it was a horrible thing, and it was a big, huge tragedy. Till this day, I cannot imagine that it actually happened, but some innocent people got hurt because of that. Why? Because some people, emotion got the best of them and acted in a wrong way. The sad thing is, this is not the world that we want to live in. They burn, the Middle East burn Bibles, the United States burn Koran. Middle East put a video about Jesus in a bad way, somebody put a video about Muhammad in a, in a bad way. This is not the world we're living in. And this is not the word we want to live in. Respect is a big, huge thing. Whether the West respect the East or the East respect the West, respect is a big, huge thing. Even as important and as a big deal as communication, we have to communicate with each other as two countries, Egypt and the U.S., and as two cultures, the, the, the East and the West. We have to understand each other, we have to understand how we think, what makes us vulnerable, what makes us tick, how to kind of take care of each other. The most important thing that I need to say, because you need to understand this as somebody watching this, why the Middle East would never put such a video of Jesus or the Virgin Mary or that kind of disrespect? Because we as Muslim, I'm a Muslim and from Egypt and I live in the United States. As a Muslim, you cannot be a good Muslim without respecting Judaism and Moses, Christianity and Jesus, Islam and the Prophet Muhammad. You cannot be a Muslim without respecting all that. Actually, this is something was said about the late President Sadat a few years back, 30 or so. It talks about how much respect the people have for Christians or Jews in Egypt. Actually, listen to the video, then we'll talk. قلت أنا رئيس مسلم لدولة إسلامية يعيش فيها المسلمون إلى جانب المسيحيين والشعب واحد. أيضا رسالتي دي ما تفهمتش. بالذات من المسلمين الرسالة الأولى 
بتاعه كنيسه عشر رمضان كانت موجهه في المقام الاول لرئيس الكنيسه انه ما تضيعش وقت الدوله ووقتك في كنيسه وكلام ادي الدوله بتبني من غير ما انت لا بتطلب ولا بتدفع كمان هي بتبني ما نضيعش وقت ما فهمهاش الثانيه لما قلت رئيس مسلم لدوله مسلمه كان للجماعات الإسلامية وغيرهم إن الرئيس المسلم للدولة المسلمة لا يقبل المساس بأي مواطن عنده خاصة وإذا كان دينه كتابيا أي المسيحي واليهودي أبدا لا من قريب ولا من بعيد لأن قرآننا أو لنا كده قال لنا أن نؤمن بما جاء لموسى وعيسى ومحمد <تصفيق> ما تفهمتش What he exactly what the president Sadat said the late president Sadat said that you cannot the president of the country the president of Egypt he was talking about himself that he cannot let anybody disrespect disrespect a person of a religion, whether it's Christianity or Judaism. Now can you imagine how much we respect the Jesus and Moses? So that's why nobody in the Middle East will ever do that. Because when it happened in Denmark, nobody ever did anything like this on the net. And when it happened with the video, and it happened like a month ago or a few weeks back, nobody will ever do anything like that. Because the utter respect we have for all the religions that came from God. And again, what we're trying to say is, look at what happened with President Obama. He respected other religions and other leaders that he went all the way there and said, we're sorry. It's not us. It's not the government. It's not the people. It's one moron. That's it. So you need to at least respect that part with him. Now look to what's going on right now. People are arrested in the Middle East. A few people arrested in Libya or something like that. And they're going to confess that they did everything, of course, to kind of make everybody happy. And we're going to accuse others and blame whomever just to kind of find somebody to blame. Actually, Fox right now is blaming President Obama. He's know what was going on. He knew everything lifetime. And he saw everything... I don't know, on YouTube or whatever, and Fox News getting all the inf information and news from Facebook and the Internet and the Inquirer. And now they're blaming, blaming Mr. Obama for all that's happening there. Still come back to President Obama. It always, no matter where you go, it always come back to President Obama. And Fox News doesn't care about fact checks. Fact checks, no big deal. Just throw things and see which one will stick. The, the, the proof thing is just a theory. We don't care about proof. Just throw things at the president and see which one stick. Um, the Colbert report, he really gave a good advice to Fox News. Here it is. That's a great advice. It will be a great thing that I don't know. We might learn something. Election, ladies and gentlemen, should not be about how we can make somebody else look bad and how we can take another term from somebody so he doesn't be another four-year president and we'll do this with whatever we have. Election should be about facts, issues, challenges, solutions to these challenges. Not speculation, manufacture truth, and lying to win an election. That's not the way election should be about. Election is very important. It is extremely important, especially in the United States, because we have absolute democracy, an absolute democracy, an absolute dictatorship, and what's in between. That's a discussion, another discussion. Hopefully you'll come back and see that one. 
So by the way, this is our next discussion with E2020. Hopefully you'll come back and see exactly what we're talking about. Because the election is very important. The election is the most important thing, especially in the United States. So who has the right to vote? And is voting is a right or a privilege? That's a very big question that we need to ask. So hopefully when you come back next time, we'll talk about this and you tell us what you think. So in closing, ask yourself this. Which is more important, foreign policies or domestic policies? We understand that they're both really important, but we need to understand that foreign policies is a little bit more important than domestic policies, and here is why. If you have a great economy, and you have a wonderful prosperity, then you have a war. This war took everything you built here. All the prosperous economy that you have is going to be gone in a war, whether it's small or big. President Bush put us in two wars. And we suffered for eight years as American citizens. And now the whole country is suffering. That was because of wars and other bad decisions. But that's not the time for it. Um, World War II, if you like to read history, World War II is actually one of the biggest problems and the biggest things that happened in the United States that actually affected the United States morally, family values, economically, till this day. A lot of people really don't see it that way. But again, it's a very good discussion. Hopefully you'll come back. Because World War II had a big, huge effect on the United States. Especially with family, fa family value, economics, and family dynamics. So now we'll go back to the word of... Is the foreign policy more important or domestic policy for more important? The thing that you need to remember is about Pres um, President Obama and the way he acts with everybody in the world. He actually tried to understand how people communicate. He's trying to understand what can I do to help you. That's a very big thing with foreign policy. On the other hand, Governor Romney, when he was in England, I don't know if you ever watched TV or the Olympics, but here's what he, he said about him, and here's what he said when he was in England. Private security firm not having enough people, uh, the su supposed strike of the immigration and customs officials, that obviously is not something which is encouraging. Well, our North America editor, Mark Mardell, is traveling with Mr. Romney. Mark, if he's here to make uh, friends, he's got a funny way of showing it. Exactly. Today's headlines in London really raked Romney over the coals. Dubbed the party pooper in the Daily Mail. So here's another thing that was said in the paper about Governor Romney. We talk about his foreign policies. And this is um, the newspaper from Utah, believe it or not, was talking about Governor Romney's foreign policy that just scared the crap out of everybody. To be honest, it scared the crap out of us because another war in or in the Middle East or anywhere, we really cannot afford it right now. We cannot afford it in any way, shape, or form. Um, but to talk about domestic policy just for a little bit, we're not going to get into it too much, but here's just a little bit about domestic policy. That Obamacare or what's dubbed as Obamacare, I think it's called the health the care reform. So the health care reform, which is dubbed as Obamacare. Here is one little thing to look at. What is President Roosevelt, President JFK, John F. Kennedy, and President Clinton, and President Obama have in common? I'll tell you. They all tried to have health care reform. All these four presidents, on the course of whatever, 30 years or so, or so they tried to have health care reform. But it was passed in President Obama's time. So here's my question. Are these four presidents stupid? They're very smart people. 
were very credible people. Country loved them. President Clinton, if he ran for the third term, I think half the country or at least would have picked him again. So this president are very smart people. So why he insisted on health care reforms? You know why? Because it takes care of the middle class. It takes care of the poor people. It takes care of everybody. So, would you like a president that cares about the middle class and 100% of the people? Or a president that only cares about 47%, I'm sorry, about 53% of the people, or whatever the percentage is. My whole point is, health care reforms was very important. And we have a president that cared about everybody. Okay? The governor cared about certain people, the wealthy, and the rich. And the poor? Well, I think he, this is what he's thinking about the poor. Oh, fellow members of the Roman Senate, hear me. Shall we continue to build palace after palace for the rich? Or shall we aspire to a more noble purpose and build decent housing for the poor? How does the Senate vote? Fuck the poor! Good. We're not really sure of this video. Governor Romney was there, but this is just how we feel that he think about the poor. So in conclusion, if nothing else, this video, ladies and gentlemen, it was a very sad, sad event that it happened. But it had one very serious, conniving, evil purpose, was to hurt the president, President Obama, and with him, the Middle East, and the relationship between the Middle East and the United States, or Egypt and the United States. So how can we help President Obama? One word, vote. Especially if you are a Middle Eastern, I don't care if you're Christian or Muslim, it doesn't really matter. If you look like that, you need to vote for President Obama. This is the most important thing that you can do to help him. If you're not registered and a U.S. citizen, go vote. Register your name and go vote. One of the biggest privileges that we have as people in the United States, specifically people from the Middle East, is that we actually can vote. So please vote. You're helping the man to sustain the respect and uh, the love that we are gaining back so when we go to Europe or go anywhere and we say we live in the United States, people actually say, oh, great. And instead of in some other era, people who are hiding that they are from the United States. So forward, please vote. And please help President Obama to win this election. Please sign your name if you're not, if you don't have a voting ID and vote for President Obama. Help the man to help us as a world and as a country to move forward. And hopefully all this group effort will have a better economy and a better US. So hopefully we'll have a better economy and a better Egypt and the close the gap between the United States in Egypt and the West and the East as well. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.